Hello, Family Church Online. We are so excited to see you in all of our chat rooms today. Whoa, don't sneak up on me like that. These people over here are being crazy in this, in this shot of you. Trying to sneak up behind me, looking at my strawberry patch on the back of my head. Need to be easy right now. All right. What are you guys laughing at? All right. We're here today in our main office space. Some of our 24 staff members have decided to join me because I've been alone in the main auditorium preaching to myself and cameras. So we are practicing social distancing. We have less than 10 people in the room. We are six feet apart. And I just needed to feel some love today. Is that all right? Okay, right here, right here, right here, back there. Tuesday, as I sat down to finish my message, finish my notes, it was pouring outside. The rain was just coming down. It was so loud that we had to stop filming some of our children's ministry footage, let it let the rain stop, and then film in between the breaks. Once the rain moved out, I went outside to get some fresh air, and I noticed something that I had never actually noticed before. As I stepped outside, the sunlight was blinding. It was so bright, I, I had to squint my eyes. I couldn't look up at the sky and I couldn't look down at the ground. I had to squint and close my eyes as I walked outside until my eyes adjusted. And I took some pictures of some of the trees and the leaves that were coming out and some of the flowers. I like to do that kind of stuff every now and then, guys. All right, I thought came to my mind. Wow, why does it seem like the sun shines so much brighter after a storm? So I walked back into the office and I felt like I was being so poetic. I saw a few of the staff members walking and I walked over to them. I said, guys, the sun shines brighter after the storm. And they looked at me and they said, cool. Just like that. No other response, no other reaction. And you know, no props, no praise. No, like, wow, that's really deep and all-inspiring, Pastor Mike. Just cool. And then Pastor John Mark, he chimes in. He says, well, Google says, Pastor Mike, that the sun does seem to shine brighter after a storm. Although the sun itself is unchanging, your perspective after a storm has changed. Pastor John Mark went on to read Google to us and said that relative humidity has changed. The moisture in the air is more reflective. The water on the ground is reflecting more of the sunlight back up into your face and the rain has cleared pollutants from the air such as pollen. So in fact, the sun does seem to shine brighter after a storm. And then I felt even more poetic. I said, can I turn this into a sermon? And the only way that you can turn a poetic idea into a sermon is if you can find a Bible verse on it. And in 2 Samuel 23, verse 4, it says this, He is like the light of morning at sunrise on a cloudless morning, like the brightness after rain that brings grass from the earth. And this passage is actually speaking of a leader who leads well. That when someone leads well, they are a fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air. They're like the light of the morning. They are like the brightness after the rain. And in fact, this passage specifically is talking about a king that leads well. And look at that. We were able to find a Bible verse from a poetic moment of walking outside and saying, man, it's really bright out and a storm, a dark storm had just passed. Here's what I want to bring to you today. We are in a storm. We're in the midst of a storm and we all feel it. There's no doubt in anyone's mind. It doesn't matter what state you're in. We happen to be in New York and we're one of the hardest hit in the United States with what's going on. But, all, but every state is feeling something. They're feeling some sort of 
uh, shut in or, or having to wear a mask in public, whatever it is. We're all feeling the winds of uncertainty. We feel the waves of doubt. We are being rained upon with bad news and false news. And it is hard to weather the storm when you find yourself alone. It's hard to handle tough times. But listen to me today. Big, bold words. The storm will pass. It will pass. All right, so let's take a few minutes today. And I want to study out a very popular passage of scripture. It's the story of Jesus. It's called Jesus Calms the Storm. And it's found in Luke 8.22. And it says this. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got in a boat and they set out and they sailed. He, Jesus, fell asleep. Say, come out right now. Jesus took a nap. All right, Jesus took a nap. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke Jesus up, woke him up saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. So Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm subsided and all was calm. Yo, that's so amazing, right? I love that story. I love that part right there. But then there's another half to this story. And it's like this next sentence is what a lot of preachers harp on. This is what they really concentrate on. Jesus looks at his disciples and he says to them, where is your faith? He asked his disciples. Now listen, listen, do you know why Jesus did that? Do you know why he said that? And I know that we want to over-spiritualize Jesus all the time. Jesus said it that way. He said those words then that were kind of harsh because he was a human and he was still a little cranky that they woke him up from a nap. (laughs) All right? Seriously. They did have faith. They had faith in the only one that could calm the storm. They went and woke up the only person that could do anything about that situation. You see, Jesus hadn't anointed them yet. He hadn't commissioned them yet. They had never seen anything like this before. They didn't know that they could speak to their circumstances, that they could speak to the wind and the waves. They didn't know that yet, okay? They had no idea until they saw Jesus do it that they could do it themselves. I'm telling you today that in the midst of this storm, Jesus is doing a lot. He's he's healing a lot. He's changing a lot. He's doing a lot of things that the clouds of the storm may be you know, thick around you that you can't see. You, you can't see what Jesus is doing in other countries. You're not seeing what he's doing in other states. You're not seeing what he's doing in other people's homes. He's at work. He's doing a lot. And when that storm clears and we get to hear all those things that Jesus has done, it'll remind us what we can also do. Now watch this. Let's finish this passage. In awe and amazement, the disciples asked one another. A conversation started. Who is this guy that he can command even the winds and the water and they obey him? Let's just look at that first part. In awe and amazement. Awe and amazement struck them. The sun shined brighter after the storm. Deliverance from the storm came and their eyes were opened away. Their perspective changed. Look what Jesus did. Here's the big idea for today. Yes, you are in a storm, but Jesus is in it with you. Jesus is in it with you. He's in the storm with you today. And you need to look to him. You need to cast your cares upon him. And here's what our response needs to be when a storm happens. Are you ready? We can't really look at the disciples because Jesus kind of said they responded incorrectly. We've got to kind of look at Jesus. What did Jesus do in the middle of a storm? Point number one, rest. Rest. 
Jesus was totally going to sleep through the whole storm. If the disciples didn't come wake him up, he would have snoozed the whole way. He was letting the waves rock him to sleep. And he was letting the wind row the boat. In reality, if the disciples trusted that this boat can't sink because Jesus is in it, because God is in it with us, they could have sat back and let the wind row for them. Isn't it like us right now? Storms happen, and all we want to do is just row against the storm. We want to row against it. We want to fight against it. We want to faith against it. But maybe right now might be a time to rest. Recuperate. Enjoy your kids. Enjoy time home. Enjoy your house. Enjoy things that maybe you couldn't have done in a very long time. Remember this. You can rest knowing that Jesus is in your boat. He's in your house. He's in your home. He's in your car. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You can rest because Jesus is in this with you. Notice the first sentence. If you go back and look at the passage, it says, Jesus said to them, let us go to the other side. It was never an option for them to drown. It was never an option that the boat wasn't going to make it. He, all, he told them from the beginning, let's get in this and go all the way to the other side. It doesn't matter what happens along this journey. We're going to get to the other side because he's in this with you. Rest is number one. Number two, we need to reflect. Reflect. Just like I walked outside and the sunlight was reflecting off the moisture in the air. It was reflecting off the ground so brightly that I couldn't see straight. I couldn't see clearly. We not only need to reflect the goodness of God and the grace of God, not only reflect the passing of the storm, but we need to be a reflection of God to other people around us, right? So we need to be reflectors for others, reflect the glory of God, reflect the goodness of God, and reflect the grace of God towards others. Be a reflector. When people see you, let them see that there's something different about you. Now, obviously, they're only seeing that much of you, so let them see those eyes. <laughs> let, let your eyes be a reflector of the glory of God. Let people be blinded by the brightness of God's love. Thirdly, rejoice. Rest, reflect, Rejoice. I love Philippians 4.4 4, when he says, Rejoice in the Lord when it feels right. Nope. Rejoice in the Lord when there's no storms. Nope. Rejoice in the Lord like Pastor Josh when he got his stimulus check. No. Rejoice in the Lord always, Pastor John Mark. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because there's going to be times that we're going to forget that we should be rejoicing. That's why I said, and again, I'm going to say it. And then again, I'm going to say it. And I'm going to say it right here. And I'm going to say it right here. I'm going to say it right here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice even in the storm. There's a story in the Bible where Paul and Silas, they get, captured, they're in prison, their backs are beaten, they're in stockades, and it says they begin to rejoice. And as they begin to rejoice, the sound came into the, their jail cell, and the wind, and, and the, almost like this earthquake, and their stockades were broken free, and they were able to rejoice, and that rejoicing within them released other people around them. Maybe, maybe your joy and the rejoicing that you have, maybe turning on your music in your house and, and you're dancing around your house to some Christian music is overheard in your neighborhood and it just brings a smile to someone else's face. Rejoice even in the storm. How can I rejoice? Because Jesus is going to get you through this. He's going to get you to the other side. Rest, reflect, rejoice. And let the sun shine on you brightly as we make it through this storm. As we close today, I want to quote a scripture to you in Numbers 624. 
I want to pray this over you. It says this, May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We bless you. We love you. Everything you set your hands to would prosper and be successful this week. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen.